Hello everyone. So, this is the last session on uh, growth charts ok. Uh, one of my favorite session after cross cradle hold and 45 points of counseling. And uh, what I am going to discuss today is basically uh, WHO growth chart uh, both percentile and uh, Z score ok. So, I am going to take you into the basics of uh, growth chart. Uh, what are these growth charts, how did they come up, uh, you know, elephants when they have been in use. So, all that I am going to discuss, uh, we have created uh, really good tutorials on uh, WHO growth chart, percentile growth chart. We are also working on Z score, uh, but uh, uh, you know, we would put it up as soon as it gets ready, ok. But uh, let us start with, uh, you know, WHO growth chart, uh, my, it will be my uh, session and then after that we will also kind of uh, put up our tutorials that we have created for weight for age and length for age. But I want you to understand all the definitions of, you know, what is wasting, what is stunting, what is uh, underweight, you know. So, people who are working uh, in different programs, uh, working on malnutrition, uh, they should know basically what are all this, uh, uh, you know, definitions, all right. So, let us start with your WHO multicenter growth reference. Uh, this was a study which was done between 1997 and 2003, okay. Uh, and what they found is basically uh, they took about six different countries, okay. So, they took took uh, uh, data from children uh, say in 6 different countries for example, they took USA, they took uh, Norway, they took Ghana, they took Brazil, they took uh, Oman and they, they took India. So, India was part of this multi center study uh, which was done on children. Okay. Uh, so, that is important 6 different countries which were involved including US including India. Okay. And uh, basically uh, this growth charts were created from the study and uh, it, they wanted to show that how children uh, should grow ok. Uh, and um, of course, I will describe how the study was done, but uh, essentially it was basically to show how children should grow uh, all over the world. Uh, it establishes breastfeeding as a biological norm, means that all the children were breastfed. Okay. So, they wanted to show if children were breastfed, how this children would grow uh, in, in all over the world, not just in India or in US. And then they wanted to create the international standards for all the healthy children as human milk support not only a healthy growth, but also optimum cognitive development and long term health. Okay. So, this was very, very critical uh, for, our, for all over the world to, to have this kind of WHO growth chart, which would tell us how children would grow. Okay. Uh, so, this was this basically a study, uh, it was done longitudinal data was taken for 0 to 24 months of age. Longitudinal means uh, they, they uh, monitored these children, you know, uh, on a regular basis, which I will explain how they monitor on a regular basis. And they basically took height and weight uh, of these children uh, starting from birth till 2 years of age. So, they took longitudinal data. So, same children they followed, you know, up to 2 years of age. And then uh, at 18 months to 17 months old children, they took cross sectional data. Cross sectional data means they went in there, they took a, a, you know a number of children, uh, they selected number of children and they took a cross sectional data means they took data that at that particular point just one time. Okay, that's your cross-sectional data. Longitudinal data means you would, you would keep collecting data of the same child over and over and again over a period of two years. Okay, so that's the difference between longitudinal data and the cross-sectional data. So for this WHO growth chart, what they had done, they had uh, selected a uh, few children. So uh, those children they took uh, uh, you know data of uh, from birth to 24 months of age. And for cross-sectional, uh, what they did basically they did one-time data collection uh, from ch for children between 18 months to 71 months of age. Okay, so that was uh, one important uh, aspect of the study. Uh, and then uh, basically there were three things which was common for all the children. All these were breastfed infants. Okay, so the optimal nutrition was given to the children. They had appropriate complementary feeding. Then they had optimal environment. What was what do we mean by optimal environment? Means sanitation was good. No microbiological contamination in the environment. Okay, so they they came from a very good uh, uh, background where there was not much of a, not much uh, problem with the sanitation. Okay, there was no exposure to smoke, uh, and also optimum healthcare. All these children uh, had immunization. 
medication uh, you know as per recommendation and they all had pediatric uh, routine care ok. So, this were all this thing were uh, all these variables were kept uh, common ok. Uh, and then what was the eligible criteria for individual? Uh, so, no health, environment or economic constraint on growth ok, because they all come they came from a very good uh, health, health background, they all had immunization uh, uh, vaccines, they, they all had good sanitation, there was no exposure to smoke and then they had uh, no economic constraint. Of course, you know uh, uh, looking at the sanitation, you know they wanted to make sure the sanitation is good, how would children grow? Okay. Uh, then second aspect was mother was willing to follow feeding recommendation. Okay. So, exclusive predominant breastfeeding for first 4 months and introduction of complementary feeding by 6 months of age. This was uh, you know uh, uh, basically from 1997 to 2003 and uh, all the children were termed single birth. Okay. Uh, so, only uh, single turn baby were selected uh, and there was no uh, there was a lack of significant perinatal morbidity. Perinatal morbidity means children were not uh, uh, sick you know when children were born. So, uh, there was lack of very significant uh, morbidity means not uh, you know no ICU admissions and all those were exclusive uh, you know it was basically uh, removed from, from the studies. Okay. And another important aspect is no smoking mothers before and after delivery. Okay. So, they wanted to make sure okay, there is no exposure to smoke because uh, smoking will also cause uh, problems with growth you know. Uh, and the study design the sample that uh, what they had done was basically uh, as I said birth to 20 mo 24 months of age it was a longitudinal study. Uh, mothers and newborns were screened and they were enrolled at birth ok. Then uh, weight and length and head circumference were taken 21 times over 24 months ok. Arm circumference was taken 10 times between 3 to 12 months of age and skin fold thickness was taken 6 times within 14 to 24 months of age ok. Uh, uh, then of course, in cross sectional study uh, of course, in uh, longitudinal study they had also taken uh, weight and length of children, uh, but in a cross sectional study they also took basically uh, weight, length, head circumference, uh, arm circumference and skin, uh, skin fold uh, thickness. How many total number of uh, children were taken for this uh, studies? 8440 children were taken from 6 different countries ok. 300 newborn per site, uh, so 1743, uh, uh, 1743 total followed up till 24 months of age from the longitudinal study and 1400 children per site. Uh, so, total about 6647 children uh, aged between 18 to 70 months through the cross sectional survey. Okay. So, this was the uh, study, this was the designing of the study. Uh, so, here this is what they found. Okay. Now, this is the weight for age chart. Okay. Now, I have explained this chart in detail in the coming uh, tutorial. Okay. So, you will learn in detail about uh, what this chart is and what is uh, there on uh, you know a horizontal line over here, what is there on vertical line over here. So, I, of course, I have gone very much in detail, but I will quickly brush through it because I want you to understand this charts uh, very clearly. So, that uh, you know you you when you when you are in the field and when you are plotting this children on the growth chart you need to know how children grow ok. Uh, unfortunately in India our children are not growing well and uh, this is the reason that I want to kind of uh, personally uh, you know take this session and explain to you how uh, children grow as per WHO growth chart ok. So, this is your weight for age. So, weight this is your uh, this on y axis you have a weight ok, weight of a child ok. So, it is basically 2, 3, 4, 5 you know and then there are all this you can see those dark lines. So, each dark line basically is separated by 1 kg. So, 2, 3, 4 and in between you can see those uh, light color lines uh, those are each line is about 200 gram increment ok. So, if, if child falls into say 2 kg and there is if they fall uh, say one line above that dark line that would be 2.2, 2, 2 kilogram 200 grams. So, there are 4 lines between those 2 dark lines and each light line is about 200 grams ok. On x axis you see uh, uh, you know your months and your year ok. So, this is your birth. So, what I recommend is to kind of put the date of birth over here and then basically you put your 1 month uh, uh, you know date over here second month date over here. So, I ask uh, healthcare workers to put all these dates beforehand so that they know you know when children are uh, measured when where to plot them ok. And this is your 1 year and this is your 2 years 
okay. Uh, now this is the uh, girls chart, pink color is a girls chart and this particular chart is from birth to 2 years of age. There are different kinds of chart available, okay. You have birth to only 6 months. Now I like those charts from birth to 6 months for, for say Anganwadi workers or Asha workers because they are still learning, they may have difficulty kind of calculating what is the uh, weight uh, you know plotting of uh, weight charts. So when they take 0 to 6 months they are given in weeks you know the week increment of weight gain in uh, per week and it becomes very easy, it becomes very easy for them to plot okay. But this particular over here I have shown chart from birth to 2 years of age. There is one more chart which is available which is from uh, 6 months to uh, 2 years okay there is one more which is from birth to 5 years of age. So there are all these different charts whichever program that you work in so if you are taking care of just maybe you know small children then you have to you can just take 0 to 6 months if you are taking care of uh, older children you can take from birth to 5 years you know so it depends upon which uh, chart that you are using okay or which uh, program that you are working in. Alright, okay. So here now, say for example, this particular that you can see five lines over here, right? So you see green line, you see uh, yellow line, okay. And then you see nine, uh, uh, last line, which is your 97th percentile and your third percentile. So this is basically percentile growth chart. Means percentage of children who who fell on this line, you know, or who who are marked on this line, okay, or who grew on this particular line. Okay. So, for example, as per the WHO study, what they found that all the children if everything was good, if health was good, if mothers were breastfeeding the babies, if sanitation was good, if uh, you know, if immunization was given, most of the children were growing at the same rate. Okay. Whether they came from India or they came from US or whether they came from Oman or whether they came from Norway, it did not matter. Okay. All these children till 5 years of age they grew at the same rate, uh, same rate. and that is why you, uh, you know most of the countries in the world uh, we are using WHO growth chart. So same chart we are using uh, you know uh, in India, uh, in US we use this growth chart uh, for younger children or, you know after that we use uh, uh, other growth chart but for younger children we are using uh, WHO growth chart in US also. Okay. So here, uh, here again I am going to come back to the growth chart again. So 50% of the children, okay, 50% of the children that is your average children, they basically kind of uh, grow along this green line. Okay. So average children, 50% of our children should be growing at this rate. Okay. 85th percentile means 15% of children about 15 percent would be growing at this rate. Okay. So in India how many children are growing at 85th percentile? Very few you know and then this one means 97 percentile, 97 percentile means 97 percent children would be below this line okay. and 3 percent children will be above that line. Okay. So only 3 percent of children in the world are above that 97 percentile. Okay. Similarly, if you come down, okay, here is a 15 percentile. So, 15 percentile means 15 percent of the children will be basically on this yellow line, okay, and your third person means 3 percent of children are basically on this line or below that line, okay. So, normally what would happen when you go uh, in the community, you should see only 3 percent children below this red line, only 3 percent children, okay. But unfortunately, in India, we have so many underweight children and so many uh, children who are stunted that we have almost I would say uh, you know as per NFHS uh, 5 data uh, 32 percent children are underweight, 32 percent. Normally we should have just maybe less than 3 even, even less than you know uh, 2.7 percent or 2, 2 point you know uh, below this third percentile. We have almost uh, 32 percent. Uh, children that is that is actually uh, terrible you know. Uh, so what we are trying to do we are trying to uh, increase the birth weight of the children because remember I told you that the birth weight average birth weight of children in India is only 2.7. So let us see what happens when a child is born at 2.7 okay. So again I want you to focus on this growth chart okay. Now I want to show you what should be the average birth weight so this is your birth okay average means your green line so just follow your green line okay now look at this uh, green line for a girl child it's 3 and it's one line above so it's 200 
So the average birth weight of a girl child all over the world is 3.2 kilogram. Okay. Where do our children fall? We have 2 and 7. So if you look at the 7 that would be uh, falling over here you know. So I would say uh, between 3rd percentile and 15th uh, percentile. So they are not even on 15th percentile when they are born. Okay. Now we want to bring those children because there is something called growth catch up. Okay. So when you want to do a growth catch up, you have to remember that the children have to grow much more than what, what WHO is recommending. right? Uh, because if you do not, uh, just with one infection or one diarrhea, they may just fall, they would be growth faltering, they would not, uh, you know, they would they would come under minus 3 or I would say 3rd percentile and they would show up on underweight you know as per Z score I will discuss what is Z score but you know we, uh, we need to have good amount of growth catch up. Unfortunately what is happening is the children are not growing as per WHO standards okay and I will show you how they grow per month and we have to make sure that if you can't do a growth catch up at least do not let them fall okay? because if we let them fall this children will basically will show up into your uh, NFHS 5 or NFHS 6 data and says all these children are underweight but they are born underweight. What did you do while they were falling off? right? So that is what I wanted to explain to you. Okay, here. So now you have suppose you have a girl child born in your family okay? and she is beautiful 3.2 kg weight gain. Okay, uh, absolutely average as per world standard. Okay, now look at that one month of age. So at one month of age, what is where is that green line uh, intersecting? You can see that, that green line is intersecting at 4.2 kg. So you can see over here it is intersecting at 4.2. So in one month, that girl child who was born who was 3.2 kilogram need to gain at least one kg to be able to follow her growth chart right to, to, to be able to follow her growth trajectory on 50th percentile. Remember I told you children should not falter. Okay? In fact our goal should be that child should gain as much weight as possible on mother's milk. So if she is born even average and if she is growing beautifully, if she has amazing milk transfer, those children will put on lot of weight more than 1 kg. And that is what we have seen in our program, I will show you some of my growth charts which I have already shown you before. But think about uh, first 3 months are the most important time period for growth of that child. Okay? Because uh, again I had discussed in my first 1000 day session that how when these children uh, they grow early on in their life, they have a higher IQ and of course they are not stunted. Okay? They, they become tall because if you look at it, see how, how look at the growth trajectory the way they grow so fast right okay so that was your one month weight which was 1 kg now let's see child you did really well with uh, all the different holes and baby's uh, mother is breastfeeding properly and you know baby gain 1 kg now let's see what happens in the second month so from first month to second month uh, basically the weight gain is from 4.2 to almost 5.1, uh, I would say even 5.2. So again in second month girl child is gaining about 1 kg average. Okay? Uh, what we are told, we have a cutoff of 500 gram weight gain. Uh, so whenever I speak to all the healthcare workers including medical officers, including so many doctors, uh, because they say cutoff is 500 gram, they keep the target at 500 gram. So they feel if the babies gain 500 gram, they are fine. No, it is not. You know, please understand from this growth chart, plot it yourself, plot the child who, you know, you can get this uh, growth chart from WHO website, plot it, plot it yourself because if you plot it, you will know how children grow. Okay? So if a child who is born 3.2 kg, which is born absolutely normal, in one month if child gains only 500 gram, will child will immediately fall down from 50th percentile. Okay? And the same child again instead of gaining 1 kg has gained just 500 gram because that is that's the target weight which all the healthcare workers understand. 
डिफिल फैनोग्राम हो गया बस हो गया यू नो सो अगेन इफ चाइल्ड फॉल्स फ्रॉम जस्ट कैन से फाइव हंड्रेड ग्राम फ्रॉम फर्स्ट मंथ टू सेकेंड मंथ चाइल्ड विल फॉल टू अगेन फिफ्टीन परसेंट चाइल्ड एंड देन इवेंचुअली विद इन थ्री थ्री एंड हाफ मंथ दिस चाइल्ड इज गोइंग टू बी अंडर थर्ड परसेंट चाइल्ड I mean, this is the uh, issue that uh, really I'm facing in the field. I have to unlearn all this learning that healthcare workers have gone through, and I tell them, no, your cutoff should not be 500 gram. Your cutoff should be 900 gram, or maybe one kg. Children should grow weight as per. Uh, WHO standards, you know, why should we allow children to falter at all, you know. So, focus on breastfeeding practices, focus on those skills, focus on those how to hold the baby, all those uh, 45 pounds that I mentioned and your child will grow not just 1 kg, they will grow 1.2 to 1.5 kg, right. So, this is what I want to tell you, okay. Now, look at the third month. This is a girl child again, okay. So, child was 5.2 kg, did very beautiful, so 5.2. Now, in third month, now child is about 5.8 kg, so about 5.9, okay. So, now think about it from uh, 4.2, uh, uh, I would say, uh, sorry, 5.2 to now 5.9. Okay, so again, child uh, grew about 800 grams. Okay, so again, remember how children grow. See, she grew so fast in first two months. One kg, one kg. Now 800 gram. Now she will slowly, slowly slow down this child. Okay, so if you can really focus on those first three months and get the weight up, you know, uh, believe me, they grow fast on the length also. Okay, all right. So then again, look at the average uh, weight at three months of age. The girl child average weight is about say between 5.9 to uh, 5.8 to 6 kg. So around I would say around 5.8, 5.9. Okay, uh, approximately. All right. Now same child at six months. What is the average weight of a six months old child? About 7.3, 7.4, 7.3, 7.4 kg is the average weight of a girl child. Now, if you ask anybody in the field, what should be the average weight of a six months old child, most of them they say around 5 kg. So, if you have a, a six months old child who is only 5 kg, they are basically already less than third percentile, okay. So, that is what they are, uh, you know, approximate this thing in 5, 5.5 kg, you know. So, we want to make sure, that remember that the girl child uh, approximately, uh, you know, the weight at uh, six months is around 7.3 to 7.4 kg, okay. Now, same child at one year of age, it is about, I would say, uh, about 9 kg. So, here this is the intersection, you can see this is the dark line and you are touching the 9 kg, okay. So, now you can see from 6 months to 1 year, there is not much weight gain as it was between 0 to 3 months of age, okay. So, remember, if you want to gain, if you want to catch up on weight gain, first 3 months, focus on first 3 months, follow up those babies every, uh, you know, at after birth, I would recommend to follow those babies every 48 hours, okay. As long as baby is, uh, you know, as soon as baby gain 40 grams, you know, 35, 40 grams, you know, you, you know it that mother knows how to breastfeed, right. Mother knows those all important counseling uh, points, right. If baby is not gaining uh, 35 to 40 grams, that means there is a high risk of this child faltering, okay. And till that mother gains, uh, baby gains 35 to 40 grams, you are not going to give up. Because if you do not follow up with the mother, you if you do not uh, kind of fill out those uh, breastfeeding assessment form, that means, you know, uh, we have not done our job at all. How do you allow a child to falter, right? So, that is that's important part uh, and I am I, kind of a little bit strict uh, in my program about how children should grow specifically in first 3 months and then my uh, my uh, focus comes after 6 months because after 6 months uh, what happens is what we saw initially that all these children were just basically stagnating means they were just not growing. So, they were just going in straight line, they were just stagnating. They may not they may not be falling off the growth curve, but they were just stagnating, right? And that was because children were getting predominantly carbohydrate rich food. They were just getting rice, 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 rice khichdi, rice roti, uh, rice and dal, it was just rice. Uh, and dal, whatever they were getting was extremely uh, watery, monotonous 
dal that they were getting ok. So, here at 6 months if we want to improve children's weight uh, please focus on nutrient dense food you know talk about consistency, talk about the amount, talk about the food that they will get start with protein rich food you know do not be obsessed with vegetables and fruits you know. Yes, you can give vegetables, but start with protein first, give food which is high in protein and then add uh, vegetables in it, okay. And do uh, think of giving those protein powders uh, that mothers have made at home. And if you do home visit, make sure that mothers have prepared those, uh, you know, uh, legume and seed powder or, you know, those peanut and seed powders and, uh, you know, a lot of this bean powder that we have prepared. If mothers start using those powders and if she knows the consistency how she should prepare, uh, then believe me, you will not see the results. And if children who are non-veg, uh, focus on, uh, you know, of course, uh, eggs and uh, chicken and, uh, you know, liver. Liver is one of the most nutrient dense food. So, do not have your own bias on children okay you may have different religious bias but that's for for your sake you cannot uh, you know impose those biases on uh, children who are growing so and it, it's so essential for them to grow their brain is growing okay all right all right so now you have one year old child that i already discussed is a uh, one year old should have about 9 kg average weight okay now look at this just a 9 kg in one year so from one year to two years of age this child will not grow much okay so from 9 kg to just about 11 and half kg okay so that's about uh, just two and half kg so in the whole year baby will gain just two and half kg okay so when you get children at one year of age and if they are say very low on weight very difficult to make bring them up because if they have not grown in first year of life this children then they stagnate not only in weight but they also stagnate in length Okay, so make sure that uh, you know you you focus on weight first till one year of age. I would say focus on the weight part till six months of age, because after six months of age, you will realize that if children are not uh, gaining length, that means they're getting nutrient, uh, you know, not nutrient dense food. They're getting probably calorie dense food. If they are just gaining on weight but not gaining on length, that means children are getting too much of calories which are not necessarily nutrient dense probably they are getting empty calories ok. So, after 6 months I tell all my uh, uh, you know team members to focus on length you will realize if children are growing tall that means they are getting good um, good uh, nutrient dense food ok. Alright, so this was your uh, weight for age uh, chart. Now I will go with the next chart this is weight for age uh, for boys ok as per WHO this is again percentile growth chart and I want you to look at now the boys chart that how they grow ok. This is your age ok, this are your months, this is your weight ok, uh, same exactly same chart as uh, a girls chart but the uh, weight gain is different ok. So, here look at the average birth weight of a boy child ok, the average birth weight should fall on this green line. Okay, so uh, average weight for a boy for a boy child at birth is about 3.3 kilogram. Okay, so 3.3 kilogram is basically that's what is the average weight. Do we have 3.3 kg babies born in uh, rural areas, tribal areas, urban slums, or even to uh, you know illiterate literate mothers? No, we don't actually. It's a very unfortunate. Very rarely we see 3.3 uh, kg babies in India. Okay, why? Because mothers' nut uh, nutrition is uh, not done properly. They are just eating lot more carbohydrate-rich food. They're not eating protein-rich food. They're not eating good fats. You know, uh, and unfortunately, they put on a lot of weight. It's not that uh, uh, you know mothers coming from elite areas they don't put on. They put on a lot of weight, but it's all not going to the baby. Okay. So, if you want a healthy baby and this is again I have explained very beautifully in Kailash's story where his wife was only 34 kg put on good amount of weight on baby, uh, mother had gained about 12 kg, 11.5, 12 kg and then baby was 3.1 uh, kilogram imagine higher than the Indian average and she came from a tribal area where she had 
previously uh, had miscarriages, two miscarriages, I would not even say pre premature delivery I would call it because babies were born after seven and a half months and uh, you know obviously because of a poor nutrition, right. So this is what I am uh, saying is that try to increase or improve mother's nutrition uh, and we have gone through all these tutorials uh, in my previous session on pregnancy nutrition, you know, uh, adolescent nutrition, pre-pregnancy nutrition. So again think of what all things that mother need to eat, focus on protein again and you know you will not have a issue. Okay, so here let us see. So now your baby is born say 3.3 kg, okay. Now at 1 month of age that child weight at average is about 4 point uh, I would say 4.5 kg, okay uh, or 4 point I would say yeah 4.5 kg. So from 3.3 to almost 4.4, 4.5 that is about 1.1 uh, kilogram. Okay. So, if it is per month, it is 1.1 kilogram. So, how much it should be for per day, right? It would be around 30, 30 gram, more than 30 gram actually, you know, it will be more than 30 gram, it is 1.1 kg. So, almost up to 40, 40 gram, 38 gram per day. F follow this children up, okay. I want you to follow this up, children from birth till baby start gaining minimum 35 grams, minimum. Okay. I would be very happy if you keep the target up to 40 grams because that is what my target is. I, my target in my program is 40 gram. So if children gain 40 gram weight gain uh, per day, that is when I tell mothers, okay, you are fine, you do not, I do not need to see you for next one month. Okay. Uh, so do that. Okay. Now again if you look at from 1 month to 2 months of age, okay, this children from 4 point uh, almost 5, so they are now gaining almost 5.5 kg, okay, 5.6 in fact 5.6 kg. So again children are gaining almost 1.1 to 1.2 kg a month. If it is 1.2 kg is 40 gram weight gain per day. Okay. Now in India we have a cutoff of 500 gram per month. So can you please calculate if you if you divide 500 gram over 30 days, okay, what would be the weight gain per day? It is only 17 grams approximately, 17 grams, where is 17 grams per day and where is 40 gram weight gain? Just think of, think, think of it, I mean think, you have to think of yourself, think about it and then uh, you know make a decision that what you want to do, you want to keep the target that low that you allow the child to keep faltering, faltering so by the time child is 3 months old they already come into uh, undernutrition and you know all those uh, basically Z score it comes into standard deviation less than minus to standard deviation okay. I will talk about standard deviation but uh, we do not want that okay. Please allow the child to grow you know do not have those uh, uh, preconceived notion that okay you know this much is enough no child you have to give full potential to the child to grow okay now same child at 3 months of age what is the average weight of a 3 month old boy child it's about 6.4 kg you can see over here this is a 6 kg and there are two lines up uh, and that's 6.4 so the average weight of a 6 month old child is 6.4 now do you remember what was the birth weight of the child? The birth weight of the child was average 3.3. So from 3.3 now this child's average at 3 months is 6.4, right? So that's almost I would say uh, double. So you are doubling the weight of a child in almost 3 months and not 5 months. Okay, because that is what I was taught in pediatrics in US uh, that you know children children uh, double their weight uh, in uh, 5 months. Okay. Uh, yes, over there our children are born very big, the average weight is 3.5, 3.7. Okay. So if your average weight is 3.5, 3.7 or uh, even 3.5 then you can say you are, you are doubling your weight by 3 months, I would be very happy but your children are not growing at 3.5 kg birth weight, your children are growing at 2.7. So if you have 2.7 to if you double your weight is 5.4. So let what, what happens if you have a double your weight gain 2.7 kg double the weight is 5.4 and if you are telling everybody that at 5 months your child is growing, child should be double the weight that is your 5.4. So let us see what happens at 5 months if I have a child who is just 5.4 this is your 5 kg and this is your 2 line up, child is already less than 3rd percentile. 
this is what I just wanted to kind of bring it to your notice that a uh, lot of this uh, you know uh, saying which are uh, which which kind of floats around in pediatrics it's it's not it's not valid okay uh, yes if you have a 3.5 kg birth weight you can say double the weight in 3 months but if you have a 2.7 kg and in most of the areas that i work in all these tribal areas they low they are low birth weight babies like for example there's one district i'm working right now 30% children are low birth weight means they are less than 2.5 kg I'm, uh, probably average about 1.8 to 2 kg. Now how can I say the children will double their weight in 3 months or, or, or even I would like to have that double the weight in 1 month for this child right. Uh, so this is this is what I wanted to bring it to your notice alright. Now let us see 6 months old child boy child okay. Now the weight of this child at 6 months is 8 kg. So boy child 8 kg at 6 months. What was the weight of a girl child at 6 months? 7.4 kg ok, 7.3, 7.4 ok, it was in the middle alright. Now you have a same child 1 year old, what is the average weight of a boy child at uh, 1 year of age? 9.5 kg ok. So make sure that your children are at least your average children should be 9.5, your uh, good amount of children should be above this mean also because this is all normal right this is all a normal range you want children to be as big as possible early on in life on mother's milk and good food you know not on junk food okay and your children are going to grow tall there is no doubt about it okay. So make sure that you try to bring your children on at least mean or above mean okay all right. Then the same child uh, now baby is 1 year of age and is about 9.5 kg and then you have a second year child 2 year old child ok. Uh, what is the average weight around 12.2 kg. So 2 year old boy child the average weight at 2 years of age is about 12.2 kg ok. Please remember this because I do not see this kind of good weight gain. Of course, after 6 months of age, weight gain is important, but what is more important is height, ok. So, if children are not growing well in, in terms of length, because obviously under 2 years we call it length, that means the children are not getting nutrient dense food, they are if they are gaining weight but not length, that means they are getting energy dense food. Energy dense food means they are probably getting lot more carbohydrate, lot more sugar, lot more jaggery, you know, lot more any of those nutrients which are which I would call it, I would not even call it nutrient, they are they are empty calories, okay. So they are putting on weight, but uh, you know, for height to grow, you require micronutrient dense food. You need protein, you need good fats, you need magnesium, potassium. Remember the growth nutrients, right? So think of those growth nutrients add those growth nutrients in the form of food ok. So food to food fortification, uh, I do not believe in giving too much of that fortified food, uh, give food to food fortification natural food and children will grow ok, alright. So that is your weight for age boy. Now look at the length, so similarly now you have a length for age, again this is a percentile, so you, if you look at on the right hand side you have this percentile, third percentile, 15th percentile, 50th percentile, ok. Uh, before I come back to this uh, length for age, I want to go back to your weight for age because I want to show you that if your child is born small, ok, if your child is born 2.5, 2.7, uh, then you will need good amount of growth catch up. Okay. And we have seen good amount of growth catch up in uh, most of our babies if they were trained properly on uh, milk transfer. Okay. So, so for example, now you have a 2.7 uh, kg child born over here who is between 15th percentile and 3rd percentile. Okay. Now you want to try to bring this child up on 50th percentile because I do believe in growth catch up. Okay. So what happens when this child uh, if child has to come to mean or uh, to average okay, then what would it be? It would be uh, basically uh, child will be gaining lot more than uh, th uh, 40 grams a day per uh, per day ok. So, they will be gain, they need to grow even for like 45 to maybe almost 50 and within 1 or 2 months they would catch up and they would come. So, again if you have a small child uh, young you know like a, uh, I would say you know less than 2 uh, you know 3.2 kg then do, th do think of uh, catch up growth and those you can calculate how much weight can they need per day to catch up to at least up to mean ok. All right. 
So, this is your length for age again you know look at this uh, average uh, length for a boy child is about 50 centimeter over here you can see 50 centimeter each line is 1 centimeter ok. So, at uh, your green line intersect at uh, 50 centimeter at birth and then you have 6 months you know again about uh, I would say uh, 66, 67.5 ok. So, this are all uh, you know your uh, uh, average uh, you want to just look at it I am not going to go too much in detail because we have a tutorial. So, you can you will go uh, in detail through those tutorials ok. The second person chart for length for age the average birth length for a girl child is 49 centimeter. So, remember that 49 centimeter at birth for a girl child 50 centimeter at birth for a boy child ok. Now, this is a standard deviation chart ok. Now, I am going to come back to standard deviation growth chart uh, in, uh, uh, in my next part because now it is getting extended. So, I will come back to the standard normal uh, distribution in the next part. Thank you so much.